Okay, as you can see, we are back at the transmission. We're going to start a little transmission reassembly. So what we have here is the transmission case. It's cleaned and ready to go back together, except I'm going to leave it outside here in the sun. It's a warm day, so I'm going to put it in the sun, let it warm up. Because as that's sitting in the sun warming up, this output shaft with the spacer on it that needs to be left on it, is going to be chilled and by chilled I mean I'm going to put it in a zipper plastic bag and put it in the freezer for a couple hours and I'm also going to do that with the bearing. Plan is as the case sits out here in the sun and warms up it will expand hopefully enough that the bearing which is going to be chilled to below freezing it will shrink a little bit and we should be able to if all goes according to plan be able to simply turn the case over and drop the bearing in now we may have a little bit of um, persuasion handy in the form of a brass punch and a hammer just in case but hopefully we'll be able to push it in with nothing more than hand pressure and if that goes well, then we'll let the bearing come up to ambient temperature out here in the sun while the output shaft continues to chill and hopefully shrink a little bit. And then, actually while that's chilling, and this is warming up, this is the old seal, but we'll take a new seal, which I don't have in front of me, we'll install a new seal there in the case. So. We're going to put the bearing in the freezer, output shaft in the freezer, get the new seal so we can hopefully install the bearing, then install the seal, then install the output shaft. And then we can begin installing the internal components of the transmission. So right now things are going to go into the freezer and we'll come back when everything's and warm that I want warmed up and chilled that we want chilled. So when we come back, we'll start the assembly. Okay, so we're back and what we have here is a transmission case. I'm just gonna pull the dipstick out of it so I don't accidentally break it. We have the transmission case that I left out in the sun. Normally they tell you to warm this to 200 degrees, but I'm just gonna try this with that being left out in the sun. The bearing is in the freezer. I have the old bearing here to possibly uh, use to help install that if this doesn't want to go in. And there, the bearing has gone into place with finger pressure. So that was almost too easy. So the bearing is in. Do need a hammer? I'll let the bearing come up to the same temperature as the case because I want to turn this over and put the seal in on the other side and if I turn it over now the bearing will just fall out again so anyway we'll let this warm up I'll get the new seal and then we'll put the new seal in it in an instant on the ca in camera time but it'll be uh, a little bit as the bearing comes up to temperature Okay, so I've let the case and bearing, newly installed bearing, come to the same temperature. And the bearing seems to be happy to stay where it's put. And now we'll put the seal in. And what I've done is I've, the new seal is here. I found a, a socket that I'm going to use to install the seal. The socket fits the seal nicely it's not larger than the seal and it should be pushing on the metal edge of the seal and I've also brought out another case that still has a seal in it so I can see that the seal is installed so that it is, it is slightly below flush actually the edge of it is below flush but the lip here is flush with this surface here so we want to put the seal in 
straight and we want to put it in so that this edge the, the raised edge of the seal is even with that so that's going to require some delicate tapping so I've got it supported on a block here so it's not resting on its studs and I'm going to carefully check as I go here to make sure I'm not putting it in really crooked so right now I have the outer edge of the seal just about flush with the case and now I'm going to go a little further not quite there yet Still not there. And if I use a rough straight edge here, still not in quite far enough. So we're almost there. And it's better to go slow and just install it once. Actually, very close on my right, but not as close on my left, so I'm not square. even there not is just a bit right a little bit more in the back there Okay, so that is actually a little high on this side. Side, it's a rounded <laughs> surface, so I say that's sides, but I guess in this area that's high. But anyway, we want it even. I'm not sure the exact placement is critical. It should be as, as even as possible. Anyway. That. That, I believe, is square. So now I'll round up some other pieces and we will begin reassembling the other components of this transmission. The next part of this transmission to go in place is the output shaft, which goes in the bearing that we previously installed. The output shaft is sitting in the freezer. Hopefully it's chilled enough that it will install in this bearing as easily as the bearing installed in the case. But before I go get that, I've assembled some tools here. And what I did was, I've got the sprocket. The spacer that goes under the sprocket, the sorry, get the sprocket, the output sprocket, the dishwasher that goes on top of it, and that holds that holds the, the sprocket, the dishwasher, dished washer, the nut that holds the sprocket on the output shaft, the spacer, and I took the screw out of the nut that. Oh, no, sorry, took the screw <laughs> took the screw out of the sprocket that holds the nut in position because it would get in the way to tighten the nut. And I've grabbed the chain wrench to hold the sprocket and the socket, actually the socket we just used to install the seal, is the right size for the 
not to hold the sprocket on, so I'm going to go turn the camera off, go get the output shaft out of the freezer. Hopefully it will slide in place. Then we'll put the spacer in place. Actually, I'm going to put a little oil on the seal before I go into the, uh, the freezer. So I'll put a little oil on the seal. Hopefully the output shaft will slide in place. We'll put the spacer on. That spacer works in conjunction with the seal. Actually, I can oil the seal and spacer and set that in place first. So the output shaft should go through the bearing and spacer. Then the sprocket can go on, dish the washer, and the nut. I'll hold the nut with the chain wrench and snug the nut with the socket. This will have to be tightened better when the engine is in the stand and it's a little easier to hold onto it and keep stuff from slipping, but it, the nut will at least hold the output shaft in against the bearing. Okay, so those parts there. I'm going to turn the camera off, put a little smear of oil on the seal, on the spacer, put the spacer in, go in and get the output shaft, come back out, turn the camera back on, and hopefully do some more assembly. Okay, I took some regular 30 weight oil, put a little oil on the seal and the spacer, put the spacer in place. Here's the chilled output shaft. Hopefully it will cooperate and just slide in place. If not, oh, there's looking, looking like it's part way in, but not all the way in. So I'm going to support it, support that with the socket. Nope, that actually won't work. I'm going to simply hit it with the end of the hammer handle. I'll just simply hit it with the end of the hammer handle. And I'll grab my other hammer here with a plastic handle. Tap the there. That sounds like it has home, hit home. So not a slip fit in as the bearing was, but the there's the output shaft in with the spacer between it and the bearing. And now it's not quite as imperative that I put the sprocket on because it's not likely the uh, output shaft is going to fall out. So I'm going to put the the dished washer is dished so I'm going to put it on so that the surface on the inside edge is going to hit the again touch the sprocket and put the not on them. I'm just going to put a little oil on the threads of the nut here. Start the nut by hand. Clean the oil off my fingers. So I don't slip when I'm using the tools here. Need the hammer. Need the socket. I need the chain wrench. I'm going to turn that clockwise, so I'm going to put that on this way. Again, I just want to snug this to hold things together. Before the primary chain case inner half goes over top of this, I'll make sure that's tight. So there's the transmission case trying to escape. There's the output shaft installed with a new bearing. Okay, so I'll just clear up some of this clutter and we'll 
install some internal components in a moment. So just to do a little prep work here before we start install, installing the shafts and the shift fork assembly into the transmission. There's a couple of things we want to do. On the cover, we want to take the 24 roller bearings, cylindrical roller bearings. We want to put a little grease in here, put the rollers all in. There's two rows of them. Then we want to put the washer on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some, I'm going to take some synthetic grease. I have some nice clear stuff so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to just put a little smear in there and then stack all the rollers in there. Then I'll set the washer on. Then I'll do the same thing in the output shaft here. There's a, an area where 14 ball bearings run, so I'll put grease in there and then take some needle nose pliers and put all 14 ball bearings in place there. And I'm going to have handy, while I do the assembly, some SAE 30 oil. This doesn't have to be a specific brand, it's just heavy duty 30 weight oil it can be detergent or non-detergent oil whatever you're going to put in the transmission and I'm going to give all of the shafts and gears and stuff a, a little bit of oil on them just so things slide in and they're protected against corrosion while they sit before the transmission is installed in the engine and filled with oil so I'm going to put the grease in the bearing locations and put all the bearings in then show you how I've got them in and then and I'll oil the shaft and stuff up and have them ready to go so it doesn't take long on camera to put it all back together or at least to set the, the two halves together I guess I'll have to find the, the gasket for here and we'll have to uh, get some sealer ready for that but anyway I'll shut the camera off put some grease on, put the bearings in place and come back and show you where the bearings have all been put. Okay, so I've broken out the just some multi-purpose synthetic grease. It, uh, this particular brand is just, it's clear so I can see what I'm working in instead of using a, like a, a black grease and what I've done in the case cover here is put the two rows of roller bearings, the cylindrical roller bearings in the shot and the in the outer bearing race. Now this is where the shaft goes through that the pinion goes on to for the neutral indicator. Sorry, there's the hole goes through. So now we want to make sure that there's 24 rollers in there. They're all the right way up. The flat ends should go to the bottom of the hole and to the top of the hole and then I'm going to use a bit of grease to hold that washer in place so that's the washer the grease acts like glue so the bearings and washer are in there so that'll hold that together as we put things together and in the bottom of the case here we can see that in the output shaft by the output gear I put some grease in in the outer bearing race here and put all 14 of the balls in place. Sorry, all 14 of those balls are in place so as I lower that down over the, the transmission assembly those balls will stay put. And now what I've got in the background here is I've just got a, a clean shallow container and I'm just putting some oil on the shafts and gears so they're lubricated when they go together so that uh, they're protected against corrosion as they sit waiting for the engine to be put back together completely. So we'll put the this is the input shaft. So I'm going to put the smaller of the two sliding gears on. This is the sliding gear that works with the output shaft and gear. So that's on. Pour some oil over them. So we've got lubrication to start. And I've also got the collar on here. Wouldn't be a bad idea, possibly, to put a little of the grease on the collar to make sure it stays in place. 
But after these are all lubed, I'll have to set them in the, the shift pole assembly. I'll just take the, the large gear, the collar, the larger sliding gear, the smaller sliding gear off. Covered with oil here. So then we want to put the oh, here's the sliding gear on, oh, and then it's all slippery. Imagine that. Anyway, put the smaller sliding gear on. Put the larger sliding gear on with the grooves for the shift forks facing each other. Put this collar on, and then this gear goes on last. So I'll just put a little, I'm not going to worry about putting oil on the teeth of these right yet. I can put that on when I put the, after I put the assembly in the transmission. So I can put a little bit of oil on the shift fork. Assembly, the barrel, and the forks. And just work them a bit to make sure they're lubricated. Just move everything around a bit. Make sure oil's all in where it needs to go. The uh, inside of this that works on the shaft in there. So now. As in the transmission, that shift fork assembly goes with this to the right. The counter shaft goes to the rear. And the gear, you can see me here, the, the gear that we said works with the kickstart that's not used in this goes to the. That. that goes the same direction as the. The shift fork shaft, because the, the kick start and the gear indicator would be on the same side. Now the input output shaft faces goes out through the other side of the case. And we'll set those in. So that assembly is together and ready to go into the case. I'm just going to clean some of this oil off my hands and a little lube on the the uh, actually before I clean the oil off my hands doesn't make sense I'll put a little lube on these bushings so there's this, those two bushings in the case this one where the you know, the gear selector has to be put in yet so I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself anyway this will be ready for when the gear selector is installed almost forgot that well, we'll put some oil in these bushings, and then I better put that gear selector together. Anyway, I'll get those parts out, we'll put that together, and then we'll install that. Okay, so before we can put this, the internal parts in the transmission, we have to put the shift selector into the cover. So I've gathered the parts for the shift selector. So we have the shift selector shaft. We have the shift selector sector, which I've already oiled to make it that much more interesting to handle. We also have the horseshoe spring. We have the pawl spring. We have two new pawls. We have an o-ring for our selector shaft. We have a new snap ring to hold the selector assembly together. And we have the washer and snap ring that hold the gear selector assembly into the cover. So, we'll start with the selector shaft. 
and in the manual says, now I've already coated the shaft here, this shaft and this pin with oil, the manual says to put the first pawl on to the left because it takes most of the load and they want it close to the to the housing so it doesn't flex. So that one goes with the the, hook, the longer hook to the left. We'll put that one on with the larger hook to the right. Then we'll put the, the spring over the two of them. There, the spring is over the two of them. That's barely visible there, but there's the spring holding the two poles so that they spring back one against the other. Put them in about the middle position. So then we'll put the the sector on. Put it in about the middle position. It doesn't want to go quite in because there's the, one of the poles was interfering and there it doesn't want to go quite in the center position because of the position of the poles. So now we'll put the snap ring on. Now the snap ring, this is a replacement snap ring I just got from a set that I got at a auto parts store. And as I mentioned before, snap rings, at least these inexpensive ones, are made they're punched out. So what you get is you get a the side where they were where they were that was up when they were being punched is curved inward and the side that was against the the uh, die when the punch went through is flat. So we want to put the side that's flat or has the sharp edge against the edge of the groove that's going to resist coming apart. So we want to put, in this case, the sharp edge on this is up. And we'll take our snap ring pliers here. We could just tap that on with a socket or something, but we'll use the snap ring pliers. And the holes in the ears and as we push the snap ring gently into place we'll just spread it just enough that it goes in make sure that it's in the groove it's in the groove so that that is assembled so we can actually take the horseshoe spring put it on the back here this is one of these jobs that better with about four hands. Anyway, using my two hands and my shirt tails there, the horseshoe spring is on. So again, I put a little oil on that shaft. I'll put a little more oil on it to put it in. So that's going to go in the cover. And as we put it in the horseshoe spring, just pull this back out again. Gives me these two surfaces here. The horseshoe spring sits against those, so we'll slide this in, wiggle it in, and the horseshoe spring slides over those two ears and it snaps home. So now we'll want to, you can see there's a punch mark there. It has to line up with a mark on the pinion on the gear selector shaft when this goes together so we want this close to the hole and I think that's pretty close to where uh, where that has to be to line up when we assemble this so what we'll do is we'll turn this over we'll take our new o-ring put it down in here now the o-ring I simply got out of a, an, a, a, an assortment at an auto parts store. So the o-ring I've got in place and I'll just set this down so I can make sure this washer is clean. No, it wasn't clean. I hadn't cleaned that with the rest of the parts. Anyway, I'll clean that. Put the washer on and this, this is the original snap ring. It has, it doesn't have ears, it has legs we'll say or arms. So I'll set that down and just carefully try not to send any snap rings flying. Just ease it over the shaft. 
goes over the splines. We'll actually use our snap ring pliers here to help it. Perhaps I'll go down here where I can see what I'm doing. Unfortunately, you can't see what I'm doing on the camera. But anyway, I'm just spreading the the snap ring with the pliers just to get it over the raised area. And now that's the snap ring. Sorry, the snap ring is in its groove, holding the washer, which should hold the O-ring in place. So the our washer that's on top of our sorry our washer that's on top of our roller bearings is in place stuff's been lubed here the gear selector is in place it's lubed the snap rings are on the springs are in and this is should be timed about where it needs to be so what we're going to do is actually go ahead and put the shafts we're going to put the, the three shafts the input output shaft counter shaft and uh, shift fork shaft in place in the cover. Now, I might want to just have a look. Oop. Try not to lose that collar. Everything's oiled now, so it's really slippery. Okay. The mark we want to see on this gear selector or the shift ball assembly is here. And that to me looks like it's going to that goes in place like that that doesn't look like it's gonna be anywhere near where we want now that I'm going to take these apart and work these a little bit and I'm just going to set this in place so there's the mark we want to we want to watch for and there's the punch mark we want to line up so we want this to go in place so that that lines up sorry the mark lines up with the gap between two teeth so that's where this tooth goes so we want that to line up like that so you can see our shift fork assembly doesn't line up just right so there so I've just lined the shift fork up with the, the two bushings and that actually that won't be lined up when we put it in but it will be lined up it is it's it's lined up there now and we want to set it in like that so I'll just pull that apart carefully Is going to be interesting. So the output shaft goes there. The counter shaft here. No. goes together like so. And then we'll set this back together. Of course, everything's going to come out of place here. Our, 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 our sector is not lined up so our teeth want to go in. So what we want to do is we want to move the sector just enough so the gear goes in. And all of this Assembly should slide into place. Now it's not sliding into place. Actually, looks the the shift selector is is home it's all the way down so I would say yeah the, the sorry the gear selector is all the way home the, the pinion on it is against the washer this shaft is all the way home the pinion is against the the gear is against the bushing this shaft isn't quite home 
and because because these gears are have to slide on the shaft something doesn't just want to quite go together here and you know what it is I have these two shafts in the wrong spot so take that apart because I put it together backwards I put it together backwards so with the cover on our left the shift shaft the shift fork shaft facing to our left we'll take the counter shaft off we'll put the input shaft towards the front we'll put the counter shaft in the rear where it belongs look at that so now getting all three shafts in with everything lined up and is a treat so again we want to watch where our teeth line up so our mark is out one tooth over here so we want to move that just that way a little bit so that lines up so there hey that looks much better now it's not quite in neutral actually it seems to be in a gear that jams everything up but no, oh, this shaft isn't all the way in because of the collar. The collar that I was going to grease and I didn't is out of place. I'm just going to move it if it will. There we go. The collar against this gear was being uh, reluctant to the place there. So now the shafts are in, they're turning, they're not jamming. So this cover, now I'm going to clean the cover up because I've got oil all over the gasket surface and I'm going to take the gasket, put a little bit of sealer on both sides of it, set it in place on the transmission case, then I'm going to install the cover to the case by sliding the case down over the cover. Anyway, I'm going to clean up my hands, clean the gasket surfaces, put some sealer on it, come back and we'll slide everything together. And actually, before we slide everything together, I just noticed there was a one part I forgot. The push rod, the clutch push rod, here's the seal that goes in here and it can't go in after this assembly's together so I'm going to take those shafts that I just spent all that time arguing with <laughs> back out back out set them there so they don't move I'm just going to use this this push rod to guide this seal in I'm going to just use the transmission dipstick to push that seal into place and pull the push rod back out. The push rod doesn't need to go in there yet. We'll have to measure how much it sticks out of the transmission uh, cover here when the transmission is set together so that push rod can stay out for now. And so the, the seal is in this hole here. That seals the push rod. Now we'll set this all back together again. This is what, the third time? Okay, so everything but the sector here. Again, our mark is here. So we want the, not to be one tooth, there we go. So there, okay, back together. Now, we can't forget this collar. It goes on the input-output shaft. It should be seated right there. Okay, now I'm going to clean the oil off of the gasket surfaces, put some sealer on the new gasket, set it in place, and then we'll come back and just put the cover, the case on over the cover, and put the bolts on, and the transmission will be more or less assembled. <laughs> 